All right, well, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for each other. And thank you for this uh, uh, privilege of being a part of your people and part of the work of the church. In many different localities in London, we represent uh, different communities. I pray that you will bless these communities. We thank you as well for uh, those who could not be with us. We pray blessing for them. And Lord, we pray for this uh, topic and the ministry of uh, Christian against poverty. Uh, Lord, help us to know how to uh, connect uh, with the community, how to be able to reach out to people, but how also to be uh, effective in uh, uh, helping people to walk forward toward you and your gospel. Lord, whatever it takes to do that, equip us and release us. And Lord, we pray in a blessing over this hour that it will be an hour of encouragement and uh, uh, an hour of uh, help in, in the journey of mission that we have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. I uh, want to introduce to you Naomi. Um, Naomi is, uh, she's right here. Naomi is um, the manager for church relations in London for the uh, Christian Against Poverty. And it's really uh, wonderful to be having her because She's very familiar with Baptist churches. She actually grew up in a Baptist church. And not even that, she's a daughter of a pastor. And some of you might know him. His name is David Wise. He has been a, a, a big um, uh, influential uh, pastor in the West. He used to be a district minister, I believe, as well. Uh, so um, really great to have her with us as we're going to talk about it, uh, how to... Um, see the ministry of Christian against poverty in relation of reaching out to people, bring them closer to the gospel and building up the churches and also help them in their struggles in the way forward. Um, it's great opportunity to be able to connect with this ministry and to see uh, how that will uh, connect with our churches. So without uh, continuing any more uh, introduction, I'm going to hand it to Naomi, all is yours. Thanks so much. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my slides from here because I've had a bit of an IT problem, which means I don't think I can see any of you. So I'm really sorry um, if you, yeah, just in interject if there's something going wrong, because if you wave at me, I won't have a clue that you're doing that. So I'll just, I'll just lay that out at the forefront. Uh, give me a second and I will get them up. Can you, well, I'll say, can you see that? Could someone confirm? Yes. <laughs> Oh, fabulous. Um, so this is who I am. Um, I am the Church Partnership Manager for London for Christians Against Poverty. Um, I started in this role in February of this year. And as my role as a Church Partnership Manager, I come alongside churches all across London, um, kind of working with them for me to understand their vision, uh, their heart for mission and where it is right and it aligns well to work with them to open a CAP service. And I just... I kind of want to stay at the start that I'm not an expert on London. I'm not an expert on the communities that are local to your churches because um, London is massive. Before I started, I thought I knew London. And then when I had to travel to like, the full west and the full east and the full north and the full south, I was like, oh, I haven't quite fully understand, understood how big London is. Um, it has areas, as we are aware, of amazing affluence, but also of really deep deprivation. Um, and these will sometimes be in the same boroughs. So you guys will know your community and the challenges you face far more than I do. Um, but what I do come with is a knowledge of CAP. I come along with a knowledge of what's worked really well before, but also what has not worked well before, because sometimes I think that can have more value. Um, and I come with a real heart to see churches empowered and to see communities transformed. So, yeah, a bit of history. I grew up in West London in Greenford Baptist Church. Um, I moved when I was 18 and lived in the West Midlands to study my undergrad before moving back to London. And I moved to South London in my early 20s to complete my master's in social work. And I worked as a social worker for 15 years, working in a prison, a secure mental health hospital. And then I specialised working with adults who were sign language users. Um, last summer, I felt a prompting from God, just something in my spirit that it was time for me to move. Um, I saw this job advertised for CAP and I called my mom. I was like, I found my job. And she said, no, no, let's just one step at a time. Um, but a few months later, here I am. 
Um, so I'm sitting in South London. Me and my husband are both on the leadership team of our church. I help with the youth. He helps with the worship as well. Um, we have two children. One is eight and one has just started high school. Um, and my house is filled with the most unbelievable levels of sass, of sarcasm and of banter. And if any of you knew me or had much contact with my parents when I was growing up, you'd probably say that sounds about right. But my life story isn't why you're here. So I'm going to go back to CAP. Um, CAP was founded in 1996 by John Kirkby. And I think he did a mission hour a couple of times ago about his new initiative. Um, so John Kirkby went through his own personal experience of debt. And from that experience, God birthed in him a real desire to work and come alongside others who are facing the pressure and the same fear and the same isolation. So since its inception in 1996, CAP has grown from solely offering debt counselling, which is what it's most well known for. Um, and in 2008, it launched Money Coaching. In 2013, we launched CAP Job Clubs. In 2015, we launched Life Skills. And what needs to be added to the end of this slide is that this summer we relaunched Money Coaching, because as I'm sure you can imagine from 2008 to now, the way that we spend and handle money and the challenges we face has changed dramatically. So my focus is in London, um, but CAP is not only an international charity, but it also works across the UK. And I just want to share some stats with you. So since 2010, 20,000 people have become debt free. Uh, we've seen over 8,000 responses to Jesus. And we've now got over 1,000 churches working to tackle poverty in their local community, working to see transform lives and provide financial education, um, which is all really good stuff. But the hardest stuff is why I'm here. And there is really a stark reality of debt and poverty. CAP's Director of External Affairs, Gareth McNabb, um, explains poverty very simply. He says poverty is when you haven't got enough income to be able to afford what you need for everyday life. You haven't got enough to be able to afford what you need for everyday life. But earlier this year, CAP commissioned a YouGov poll asking people from all over the UK the effects on them of poverty and the cost of living. And the poll unearthed some really difficult statistics. So within the UK, 16 million people have been forced to skip meals solely due to the cost of food. And a further 6 million people have gone without heat on a daily basis, which is when it's weather like this, you might think, oh, that's OK. But in the in the middle of winter, um, the thought of not being able to eat my home is really scary. So poverty, a poverty has also been shown to have a negative effect on someone's mental health. And one in two CAP clients have stated they have either considered or attempted suicide as a way out of debt. The effect of poverty and debt is huge. And I'm, I'm here obviously to talk about London. So I want to kind of narrow the stats down to some stats around London. So research by King's College has identified that over the last 20 years, London has consistently had the highest poverty rate in all of the UK. Once housing costs have been taken into consideration, those living in London, the poverty rate is 25%. That's one in four people living in poverty. And if you are a single parent, that statistic rises to 47%, which means in London, nearly half of all single parent families are living in poverty. Between the 1st of April, 2022 and the 31st of March, 2023 in London alone, the Trussell Trust gave out over 384,477 food parcels. Um, and I'm not very good at numbers, so I had to break that down a bit. And that works out over 7,393 food parcels being given out a week. The numbers are massive. And for me, um, hearing those statistics is really hard for me to hear, but I hold those statistics in tension with a knowledge of both the reality and scale of poverty and the knowledge and relationship with the God who loves and cares and who has a heart for justice, who has a heart for the downtrodden and has a heart for mission. Like we all know Micah 6, 8, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And I really believe as church in the UK, we have a responsibility to respond and a responsibility to go on mission to the people who are living out these statistics. And that's why I'm here really this morning, um, because I believe there's a role for the government to play. And I believe there is a role for other agencies to play, and they play that role really well. But I also believe there is a role that the church has that is indispensable and irreplaceable. 
Recently at CAP, we've started our own journey engaging with church and community transformation. And in that, it's recognized that the church has a unique role to play in seeing transformation within their local communities. To engage well with CCC. Oh, sorry, does someone have a question? No, no, no. no. Okay, I'm <laughs> to engage well with CCT, the church um, firstly needs to understand their own mission. And for obvious reasons, this is going to vary from church to church. But once a mission has been decided on and they really feel this is what God is speaking to them about as a whole body of people, that church engages and commits to the mission, aligning themselves to practical action as the church seeks an external outworking of their desire to see change in their communities. You will know your communities better than I do. And what, what would that look like in practical action, which is what we're here for? So again, I wanna, I just wanna hone in on London. Currently in London, there are 17 job clubs, 16 life skills and 26 debt centers open. And there is an ever growing scattering of churches who are training people to deliver money coaching. These are the main ways that CAP can partner with the local church to be on mission. When we want to be agents of change within your local community. And so what I'd like to do is give you an overview of what they all look like. So job clubs, job clubs consist of eight sessions. Um, it's recognized that a low income is a main driver for, for poverty and debt. And so job clubs work mainly with the long-term unemployed providing guidance on writing CVs, on handling interviews, on handling rejection, on looking for jobs, on managing your time. Um, so, you know, if you've been long-term unemployed, actually it can sound so weird, but finding time in a day to sit down and prioritize looking for work is a skill that you need to be equipped with. Um, jobs clubs also work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, trying to build their self-esteem and call out their character strengths. There's an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one mentoring and like all of CAP services, there is an evangelistic edge. We want to share the gospel. We want churches to engage with their local community, developing friendships with people attending and have opportunities to pray and invite people to church and to further courses that are running, such as Alpha. Um, there's a cost. There's a cost to everything in life. There is a cost. Um, it's £60 a month, which is the same cost as life skills. And I'm going to cover life skills in a moment. And some people have fed back to me really honestly, which I really appreciate that they said, oh, it's really expensive, £60 a month. And Actually, if that only covered a little bit of training, I would agree with you. Um, but it covers much more than that. The £60 a month covers all of the training, both for the initial setup and for any future coaches or managers that want to train. It covers all of the resources to run the course, including the individual participant workbooks. It covers the leader's manual. It covers the slides, the video content. It also contributes to the support of an area manager. And there's three across London. And the area manager will work with your church to ensure these courses launch well and that they continue to be a tool to be on mission in your local community, engaging with the need and working to see transform lives. And that is the same for life skills. So life skills has a really similar setup to job clubs. Again, it's eight sessions and it's designed to be shared with people who are living within budget constraints. The discussion topics over the eight weeks cover sub subjects such as cooking well on a budget, shopping well on a budget, healthy me. Um, how do I keep myself healthy mentally, physically? How do I manage my gas and electric um, in a way that can save me a little bit of money and ensure that I can make ends meet a little bit better? And it has a couple of really light touch budgeting sessions. A lot of churches have found that running job clubs and life skills alongside a meal builds a strong sense of community and a further opportunity to develop friendships, which again ties back into the church and community transformation for the desire for the church to not only be an agent of change, but to seek restoration for the broken relationships between God, between us, between creation and others. So that is life skills. Money coaching, now, as I mentioned earlier, money coaching was relaunched in the summer of this year. And it's a bit different to job club and life skills. The sessions are designed so that the trained money coach from the church can build each session to suit the needs or interests of the people that are in attendance. So there's, uh, I think there's about nine modules um, and you can take the videos and the resources available um, and you can run them. So if you have people on your course that want to understand credit better, you can do have a really strong emphasis on credit. All of the materials available online and there's an online shop to buy resources and promotional material. And there is a lot of flexibility with money coaching and it's really down to the trained money coach and their, co and their church, how they want to run the sessions. The minute we're looking at doing an in-person training on November the 18th in London and there's online training um, to get up to speed with the modules and learn how to deliver it well. And 
And finally, I, I want to talk about debt centres. And I think this is what CAP is most well known for. It's not the only thing we do, but it is, I guess, where we started back with John Kirkby. Um, and again, I'm going to be straight up. It is by far the most expensive of all the mission and transformation options. But my goodness me, is it amazing? Because it offers a unique and in-depth and holistic service. Um, it's delivered in clients' homes by church members who have been trained by CAP. Uh, supported by FCA accredited debt advisors in our head offices. Um, and because it is run in partnership with the local church, there is no cost to the client for CAPS help. The service is designed to accommodate those with complex needs and vulnerabilities that extend beyond their financial situation. A lot of our clients leave lead very chaotic lives and they have ignored um, their need for debt help for a long time. So when the debt comes to us, it is incredibly complex. How does it work and how do people access the help they need? So there's a free phone number um, that a person who needs debt support can call and that will get them straight through to CAPS head office. And they will then book them into the nearest debt center where the debt center manager will make contact and arrange to visit them in their own home. And again, that's really key because some of the people we see will say, oh, I haven't had anyone in my home for two years. And they're frightened to open the door in case it's a bailiff or a debt collector. They're frightened to answer the phone because of the threatening calls they're getting. They don't open their letters um, because they find it overwhelming. So being able to go into somebody's home is a real privilege. And it also means that we have the ability to see what their living situation is genuinely like. On their first visit, the debt centre manager um, and a befriender from the local church will explain the process of CAPS debt help. And they will then offer to pray with that person. And it's really interesting that debt centre managers have found that regardless of someone's religious beliefs, it's really rare for a person to refuse prayer. The debt centre manager will take um, all of kind of the debt letters and they'll all get sent to head office. Um, and the, the, the debt advisors in head office will take on the responsibility of contacting creditors um, and work with that person to get as much debt written off as possible. The debt centre manager and the befriender will then go back over another two or three visits and work with that person with the aim of agreeing a budget that will enable them to live with dignity and autonomy and also become debt free. And no point do CAP take on the debt. The, the person pays uh, monthly into a bank account. And if they don't pay, then the creditors don't get paid. I mean, it's that person's responsibility. But we do all of the background work working with the creditors to get a freeze on accounts until we can agree budgets. And throughout each of the visits, there's an opportunity to share the gospel, opportunity to holistically come alongside someone, supporting them to access any further support that they need. I read this quote when I was prepping for this, and I really liked it. See, winning souls does not liberate the whole person. More is needed to free the person from all factors that dehumanize them spiritually, physically, socially, mentally, and, e and econ economically. And that is what church and community transformation does. Um, and, and I think for us at CAP, it's about the church just owning and being proud of the role that they have to play and being able to step into that. Um, I've I deliberately left some time for questions, but I would just like to play a video of someone in South London who accessed debt help um, and has now become debt free. So I'm hoping that if I press my little button on my, on my computer, it will come across. Let's have a look. The cost of living in the UK is rising and it's changing people's lives. So many people skipping meals is a sobering thing that a third of employers are likely to make redundancies over the next year. Really, the average household energy bill could surge above £4,200. I'm 62 years young. Um, I was born in Barbados. I have a, a mental health issue. And um, when my boys were very young, I got very ill and I was laid off work. I think if you've got a mental health label, people don't take you seriously. I was getting £64 a week to feed and clothe myself and my children. I had to choose between buying something as simple as a bra I didn't buy because I would have to pay like the gas or the electric. The, the few things that I had started to break down. My um, fridge, my cooker, my television, and my um, washing machine all broke down within a week. And I went against my own principle 
of saving up. So I ran up over £2,000. I was also borrowing money from family members, seesawing between um, paying my bills and not having enough to live on. Sometimes I couldn't sleep at night because I was thinking, oh, I've got this to pay, I've got that to pay, and um, will the debt collectors be coming round, you know. The anxiety as to how will this play out was very real. I have had suicidal tendencies in the past, and my future never seemed set. I suddenly felt because of my bills and because of my mental health situation, I was never going to make it that I'm no good. I was very fortunate because the doctor I was seeing suggested Wimbledon Guild and um, they recommended me to CAP and when I um, contacted the number that they gave me uh, I spoke to Peter and Peter was very very helpful very kind and we went through the process that um, to get me out of debt have all my bills and everything taken care of and then one day he invited me to the church and I went along. I was in awe because people were coming up to you and talking to you as though you were not a stranger, as though you were part of the family. And it's so uplifting. I really feel that I've come home and I'm very glad to say that now I'm debt free. And at first it didn't seem real because I had been struggling with my bills for a couple of years, um, more than a couple of years, to know that they had sorted it out in, in three months and that I didn't have to worry. It was such a relief. Oh, I can't tell you. I was so happy. <laughs> Working with Cap has given me a desire to do better. I've actually started going to college and um, I'm learning maths and IT. Peter encouraged me to become a befriender. Having you there and saying, well actually, I've recently gone through this process myself. It's a real comfort to other people to actually hear that yes, you can, you know, you can get through the process and come to a place of flourishing. Totally different mm. point of view now. Um, I'm looking forward to see what tomorrow will bring and what the future will hold. I'm feeling comfortable in, in myself and in my place with God. It has to be the work of God because there was no way out. But God has made a way. Father God, your son Jesus Christ looked out on crowds who were struggling with desperate need, and he suffered with them. He loved them. Lord, break our hearts for those living in poverty right now. By your Holy Spirit, grow such compassion in us that we are moved to action so that we make a difference in people's lives, just like Jesus did. Lord, use us to fight UK poverty, so that your kingdom might come and your will might be done. Amen. Amen. Um, so that, I know that's a really quick whistle-top store of Kind of cap and cap in London but if anyone has any questions um I'd love to be able to answer them if I can or deflect <laughs> and come back to you at a later point um so yeah I guess I just open the floor yeah. and see if anyone has anything to ask well thank you Naomi this is uh very uh good to have an overview of the, such uh important ministry it made a huge difference in people's lives and to many churches of course, we will always know a church or two that um, uh, engage with Kev and um, 
I think the couple of things that um, that uh, made me wonder as I was th- I was I was listening is a you need uh, one finance to run the program, and more than more importantly than finance, you do need uh, skilled volunteers in your church uh, because the volunteers will be those who will come alongside and be trained by CAB and also execute the, the program. Now, one of my questions is, which of what CAB offers is actually easier to be introduced into a church? Like if a church wanted to start, small churches specifically, because larger churches are already connected properly, um, they search for uh, such programs. How, how would they... Um, where is the right place to start? Uh, what is the easiest to start with? That's a brilliant question. Um, not the debt centre. <laughs> <Just, laughs> um, because that, that requires an awful lot of people power um, and it requires a, a quite a large financial commitment. I I would probably say it depends on the church's need in that area. Um, so when I started with CAP, I obviously came from a social work background and I hadn't got a handle on the job clubs and the life skills. And I couldn't understand why these were different from what the Department of Work and Pensions were pushing. And they sent me to go and have a look at some and I, I was blown away. So there was a church in the middle of an estate that was running job club and then life skills and then job club. And so they had people from the estate coming in, so providing them with a hot meal. But that was the need in their area. So it gave them the longevity to continue. Uh, because what, what you don't want to do is go on mission and have a couple of people to run a couple of courses and then the need in your area dries up. And um, so if you are in an area of really high unemployment, Job Club would be one of the easiest things to start with. You can start that with two or three volunteers. Um, if you're in an area where there's OK unemployment, but really low income, I would say probably life skills would be the easiest thing to start with because you need to have the people attending the courses in order for the courses and for the mission to be a success. Um, cap, cap money coaching, you've gotten a lot of autonomy with that, but that works really well. We've discovered with people kind of um, professionals, actually, I've got a regular income. How can I use this money better? It doesn't work well for people who are in debt because you can't balance that. So the money coaching, so this is what I've got coming in. You set a budget. This is what I want to have going out. This is what I want to save. And it helps people look at their money in a more holistic way. Um, so one of those three would be the best ways to start, but it, it very much depends on the need in your area and what else you have going on in your church um, at the time that you can tie in. So the church in Orpington had a community fridge. And so they tagged on Life Skills or Job Club after the community fridge. People come in already and then they had something else to go on to and stay for a hot meal. And that works quite well. We've already got an out an outwork, already got an ministry going out to, 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 to tag it on at the end um, is a nice tie up. Does that help? Very much. Thank you so much. So anyone else, I just unmute yourself and uh, ask your questions. Graham. Well, I was going to ask a question much along the same lines as you've already asked, Hani. Um, in your experience, uh, Naomi, most churches would engage on a team basis rather than an individual uh, because any individual taking this up with themselves need to be supported and encouraged and whatever. So, yeah, but you basically, Hani asked the question I was going to ask. So. If I if I can add on to that, I think it's really important that it's a kind of a church, um, a wider church. This is what yeah. we're doing, because if you have somebody come in to the church from job club or life skills, and let's say, you know, you're, you've got a really middle class church and then someone comes in um, from a very different background. You don't want to be like, oh, that, that's John Smith's job club person. Actually, mm-hmm. as a church, you want to be, yes, this is and you are welcome. And we love the fact that you are here. So I don't think it needs to be spearheaded by someone, but it needs to be embodied in the wider church. This is what we're doing together um, yeah. as a wider family of believers. Yeah. Thank you. Who's next? No one. <laughs> okay, I have another question by the time you um, think of what you want to say. I was wondering about the process. So say, for example, now one of our churches who listened to the call or been in, in the Zoom already now said, okay, I want to start. What is... 
what you're going to be doing? Like where from start to the point of then actually run it? Yeah, brilliant. Um, so CAP do training three times in a year. The next training cutoff uh, for all the paperwork to come back is January the 19th. So when I say paperwork, what that looks like is a church would put forward a job club manager, life skills manager, debt centre manager. They'd fill out an application form um, and they would need to assemble a team of one or two additional people to run the job club or the life skills with them. And they would also fill out an application form. Um, a church leader would fill out a reference form for each of those people. There's a partnership agreement that would need to be signed. Um, and as CAP, we would ask for a copy of your safeguarding policy, your health and safety policy, your public liability and your employer's liability. I mean, sure, it's just so we have those documents. Um, and then the manager would be invited to a selection day in London. And that is solely so that we as a CAP London team get to meet them. Um, they give a five minute presentation to us. And we want to ensure that the people that are going forward for training are able to stand up and deliver the training. Otherwise, it's a waste of time for them. Um, and it's, it can be quite, you just don't feel very good. So we meet them in London um, and then they do the online training and they have about a month to complete it. Uh, it's around 15, 12 hours, depending on who you speak to. Um, and then you're ready to go and you're ready to launch. So there's a few things to kind of go in the way because we really want to make sure the church and the person is well equipped. Yeah, so how, how in time wise, how long does it take to to execute that? Like, does it uh, take a few months or? I mean, the paperwork, the partnership agreement, the applications that takes, it's really quite quick because as long as the church knows where those things are, they can be sent to me. The application form isn't arduous. Um, it's not, it's not long, it's, it's very much, you know, actually tell us about your heart for mission, tell us about your experience of managing groups before, tell us about how comfortable you are with sharing the faith. Um, and then the, the training, I think, is the thing that takes the longest time and someone would need to have the ability to commit to do that training. But it's possible to do it in the evenings or at the weekend, it's, you know, over the course of a month, there's, there's quite a lot of hours free to fit in. So, if you've missed the training cutoff, that's so if you contacted me on January the 20th and said, right, we want to go, I'd say, that's great. But you're looking at a couple of months because that's when the next training cohort goes. And um, if you contacted me now before Christmas, you could have paperwork in by January the 19th and you could be setting up and launching in April. So it just depends on where the training falls and when you contact me, kind of uh, how long it's going to take to get everything up and running. Good. Thank you so much. Anyone would like to ask a question? I cannot believe I covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're quiet today. <laughs> yes. I just want to ask a question. Great. Go ahead, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, as a church, well, my church is one of the, you know, biggest um, congregation within the Baptist uh, settings. And um, I'm looking to start a community-based, like um, to help the needy. Yeah. In a in a you know around our community, and um, I'm just wondering how to start how to start it, and how Cap can help us to do this. In in what ways are you wanting to help the community? Say, for example, to maybe offer meals and like afternoon teas just to bring the community together. Yeah, so that's I, what we are looking at. So I'm assuming that you have a you have a building? We do. Um you've got a cafe or a space that could be used during the day? We do. Did you have you engaged? So I'm, I don't know whether we should meet up afterwards. <laughs> I don't know, maybe like giving all these is I'm really happy to meet with you afterwards, Livia, just to explore some different ideas of different ways you can use spaces. Um yeah. and also some other charities you could link with as well as CAP um, that might oh. be able to kind of give you some materials to make use of that space. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. great. Yes. Thank you. Did you put out my contact details at the start? Sorry? Did you Did grab I my get... contact? There? Yeah. No, not yet. Hold on. Let me just get a pen. Don't worry. Um, I, I, I can I can connect with me. I can get you the information. Thank you. 
Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Han. Yeah, not, not a problem. You. Anyone else? Okay. Do unmute yourself and uh, just uh, ask your question. And if you take longer, I will ask another question. Well, <laughs> not, not so much a question as a reflection. Um, Go ahead. There must be some pretty stringent guidelines because one could so easily get emotionally involved with someone's and end up finding yourself offering maybe, well, could I lend you 20 quid to help you out or whatever? You get caught up in the actual problem itself. Um, does that often happen or? With the debt centre managers, you mean going out to visit people in their yes, homes? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't happen. And um, there right. are, there is, the training for the debt centre managers is more involved and longer than for the life skills of the job club. Um, one of the reasons we ask for two people to go on every visit is to safeguard right. both of them for those reasons. Um, people are quite well versed in how to signpost into other areas and how to access other pots of money uh, within their local communities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there is um, a need for a debt centre manager to have a line manager within the church leadership team mm -hmm. for that ongoing financial support. That's the area team. managers in London have all been debt centre managers or are currently debt centre managers part time. So they have an awareness of, of how hard that is. And we also recommend that someone only does one visit. Because in a day, because of the emotional um, kind of the emotional cost, actually, and how emotionally involved it can be, you need time to recover from that. Um, it is it is it's a hard role to have. Um, so the person that steps into that, we would be kind of looking for somebody who has that ability to work with really hurting people and and stay the course without taking it on themselves, without having that saviour uh, mentality. Because actually, it's not us, is it? Um, it's always pointing upwards. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's very helpful. So uh, the other thing I was actually reflecting as you were playing the video and um, uh, she said that I am now debt free. And I thought, well, she's also the, her debt is paid. It seems like it's been paid earthly and also heavily because she ended up being in the church. Now, one of the challenge, I wonder whether it is um, a challenge or not but if you training people specifically to uh help uh with life skills or 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 debt management or so on is any uh any dimension of them how they they're going to uh bring the gospel into the conversation i i am also aware of the whole sensitivity over this because most of the people who will maybe reach out to a church for a dead center or whatever, they're not necessarily Christian. Uh, and how to handle that sensitivity uh, of A, making sure that they get the point that we are after caring for them, we love them regardless, but being at the same time able to produce, uh, to, to introduce the gospel safely without being accused that you're pushing my religion on, uh, on someone or whatever. Yeah. There is no blanket answer to that, I think, because each situation is different. Um, so let's take the debt centre managers when they go, they say, can we pray for you? And no is a perfectly acceptable response. And if someone says no, we wouldn't then say, are you sure? <laughs> like, actually, can we pray for you in this moment? I don't want you to pray. We will respect that. But they they, they share their faith. Um, and that is kind of what sets CAP apart, I think, from other debt providers is that there is just that, that heart to see lives transformed and people in churches. And the same with Job Club and Life Schools. It's not, we're all going to take time now and we're going to study Matthew chapter three before we even start the Job Clubs. Actually, you can share Jesus just through the way that you interact with people. Um, and as you're building those relationships with people, say, do you know what? I've really enjoyed getting to know you on this in these eight sessions. We've actually got a cafe that's starting next week. Would you like to continue to come? Um, we'd I'd really like to continue these friendships. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, we've now got, we're at Christmas and we've got a carol concert. Would you like to come and just be my guest and sit with me? And it's those those nuances, those gentle proddings, actually not tokenistic friendship, but genuine building community. Um, and that is where we see people coming into church. It's not hard, heavy evangelism. It's just always knowing that Jesus is where we want to point people back to. Thank you so much. Any other questions?
Okay, well, I, I have another one before we maybe pray. You've reached your limit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually been reflecting on this as well. When do you think your church is not ready to connect? Mm -hmm. um, because probably I am expecting that um, that you need to have things falling in place in order to see that this program will work. And uh, I am sure that uh, we are talking to you because CAP has been successful throughout the years, but there will have to be some stories are not encouraging or regarded as success. So I wonder what would uh, a church requires to be ready or when you think like, here is the red signs that you are not ready to do that. Yeah, that's a brilliant question. I think I've touched on them as I've gone on this morning. So I'll recap. I think you need to have somebody who has a passion and an ability to stay the course and love people who are broken um, without taking it personally um, and without it impacting their self-worth. And that person needs to be supported by a team um, who are committed to pray, who have the time to attend the life skills of the job club or visits in terms of the debt centre. You need the support of the church leadership team. And that has to be a whole church commitment. Um, if it's not a whole church commitment and it's just this person's in the corner's responsibility, we'd probably say the church isn't ready to go on mission yet because they haven't got the wider vision um, and the wider heart to see kind of life's transformed. Um, I think if you're starting a debt centre and you need to make sure that your finances are sure and um, there's a minimum commitment in that for I think it's two years and so if a church is well, we're not we can maybe finance it for the first six months but going onwards I could actually probably say oh can we just maybe hold it and make sure that you've got those things in place before you commit to doing this um I think that's that's probably it um and if if a church says we don't want to go on mission we don't want to invite people into our church from these courses I'd probably say well, <laughs> maybe we could just go back and <laughs> relook at that have another couple of conversations but it's about it's about the heart um, about the posture of your heart and about having that that team and a couple of people who have the skills and the time to be able to invest in it. Thank you. And obviously, it might be also, and I, I wonder your thought on that, if they are really aware of their community's needs, as you mentioned earlier, that, um, that if they're not necessarily um, recognizing, because you are not going to do that community research for them, I expect. That's their work is to know actually what the needs of the community, whether it is life skills or job or or uh, or, or debt uh, relief and so on. Don't so, do to, do with. As in, don't, don't do to your community, do with your community. Open yeah. up those conversations with the people that are out there, the community leads and say actually, what is it that you need? Yeah, excellent. Well, before we pray, anyone would like to ask anything? Last a chance. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray. Let's uh, spend a few minutes in prayer and uh, thank God for this um, ministry, as well as um, asking God to open our hearts to maybe what might be the next step for our church. Maybe uh, the Lord is um, uh, making you think about what could work in your church through this ministry. I also pray for Naomi and her uh, ministry in London that she will continue to um, be able to reach uh, the right churches, the right communities to help the release of more uh, help and support for those in need. Lord, thank you for uh, this uh, uh, ministry. Thank you for the incredible work you have been uh, doing through John Kirby right from the beginning. But also we want to thank you for the faithful leaders who are developed this ministry forward and the different uh, needs they respond to. Lord, we pray for the structure of, of CAP, uh, own managerial uh, structure and also trainers and uh, all those who connect with the churches. We pray blessing on them and blessing for their ministry. But Father, we also pray for London and uh, uh, 
poverty and deprivation and the needs that we heard about. We pray that uh, we as churches would be part of uh, getting people out of debt, uh, out of debt earthly and eternally. Uh, Lord, that uh, we will be your uh, uh, voice. Uh, you will be speaking through us. So Lord, I pray for our churches as they consider what to do about their community and, and how they reach out. Uh, may you guide them and direct them that they will be able to engage with the many needs around them for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, Naomi, thank you so much for making the time. And thank you, everyone, for making the time as well. I hope you um, enjoyed the time and had a good idea of what uh, the Ministry of Christian Against Poverty is and how you can engage with it. As well, I want to remind you that it will the recording will be in the website, so do um, pass the link to other people who might be interested. <laughs> and blessing to the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye thank for you now. So God bless. Bye. Thank you. So I'll be in touch, honey. Absolutely. Do email me. Yeah, yeah I will. Right. Thank God you. Bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.